We're at our field school today for a winter survival course. One of the shelters we're building is called a Quincy. At Gone Feral, we don't consider a Quincy an emergency survival shelter because it takes several hours to build and is ideal for a small group, two to four people. A Quincy is an amazing shelter, a lot of fun to build. It just does, in fact, take several hours. If a situation is dire and you need a, an emergency shelter quickly in the next 30 minutes, you're much better off putting together a snow trench shelter, also sometimes called a doghouse, or an open-fronted emergency shelter, like a lean-to or a half teepee, with a big, huge fire in front of it to keep you warm overnight. A Quincy as a snow shelter is not all that different from a snow cave. The main distinction being that a snow cave is dug into a pre-existing snow drift or bank, whereas a Quincy is usually made when you don't have that much snow um, and you need to start by piling up the snow into a mound. As long as you have about 18 inches of snow or more, uh, you can absolutely make a Quincy. Now let's start with a few safety precautions and construction tips. Number one, I like to see that no one is ever inside the Quincy working alone without someone standing outside as a safety measure. In the event of collapse, we need that person there to call for help and start digging. Number two, always maintain an air hole. When you're working, the entranceway is going to be open. But when you're finished and you block that doorway for the night, you really need to make sure you're poking an air hole to avoid asphyxiation. Number three, uh, definitely manage the snow quality. As you build these um, on different days, you'll see that the snow quality is everything. If you have a really dry, powdery, sugary snow, um, that's not the best for Quincy making, and you'll need to uh, leave that pile of snow to center longer, as we'll talk about shortly. Um, and number four is more of a construction tip. Uh, when I'm about to start digging, you know, we really raise our body temperature with exercise and shoveling snow really does that in a big way. So I like to shed excess layers, especially insulating layers. Typically what I do before I dive in to dig is I'll shed down to just my base layer and then put on a waterproof shell over that. So really I just have those two articles of clothing on that then dry easily later. You are going to sweat so you don't want to sweat through your sweaters and your fleeces and all your insulating layers that may then take extra time to dry later. Um, but you also, your body temperature will often melt the snow and you're going to get wet from the outside as well. So you want that waterproof layer on and you're going to sweat from the inside so that the more we can minimize the clothes we get soaked in the process, the better. Step one with making a Quincy is to prepare the mound that you'll hollow out. Select an area and stomp down a footprint the size of your future Quincy. A good sizing tool is to pick the largest person in your group, say they're six feet tall. You want to make a mound as tall as that person, as wide as that person at least, and as long as one and a half to two of those people. So for that six foot person, that's a mound of snow about six feet high, at least six feet wide, maybe more, and at least nine feet long. You might want to go to 10 or 12 feet, as you'll see here shortly. Stomp down that area, it's a great use for snowshoes that whole footprint area, and that's the, the outline that you need to fill. It's just start shoveling, pile up that snow. One construction tip here is make sure you're not just shoveling snow into the middle of that entire footprint. If you do that, the snow is going to hit and eventually start to fall down and you'll end up with this very peaked, pointy Quincy. Nobody likes a pointy Quincy. What I like to do is make sure you're shoveling all around that, that footprint, especially on the outside early on. You're building out this kind of nice snow pack up up and and then it's eventually going to dome itself after you've created your your pile gather from 20 to 30 sticks you're going to want them from elbow to fingertip length okay 20 to 30 sticks that long um, and you want to basically make a pin cushion out of your dome pile here spread out uh, grab those those uh, elbow to fingertip sticks in your hand from the end and slide them all the way in until your hand stick hits the snow. So they'll stick out about four inches or so. Um, and aim for the center of the mound. So again, make a pin cushion out of this thing. These are gonna act as depth gauges later when you're hollowing out from the inside. Then take a break, just walk away. The snow needs time to center or set up and become cohesive enough to hold its shape once you start hollowing it out. That can take anywhere from 45 minutes to three or four hours depending on the quality of the snow. It's a great time to haul water or firewood, make sure you hydrate, and take care of any other camp chores before you start digging. Once you've let your mound center long enough, you're ready to dig the entryway. You may want to put down a plastic bag or a tarp or even a scrap of sleeping pad to keep you off the snow. What I like to do first is to shear off a vertical face here. 
This will start to give you an idea of whether the snow is actually sticking together. More importantly, the reason I like to do this is because it just gives you a nice drawing board to mark out the doorway you're going to carve. So what I like to do is come in here and just really carve out, mark out the size of the door I'm going to want to make. It's ideal to keep this barely big enough for the largest person in the group to squeeze through. I'm going to carve and all, carve out this block. all the way around. With any luck, I'm gonna be able to slide my shovel in and pry it a little bit to pop out this block. Now, this does a couple things for us. One, it tells us how cohesive the snow is. But two, this can act as your door later. At the end of the night when you go inside, you can pull this in behind you and it should fit that entryway really nicely. So if possible, lift that, set it aside and protect it for later. I'm gonna continue in here with my entryway just by carving straight in, maintaining the same exact size for about two to three feet. I like to try to take it out in large chunks, like so. And before long, your entryway is almost complete. Once it becomes too difficult to reach in, I'd like to go in head first. This is again a great use for that plastic bag or tarp. And you can just climb straight in and work. After you've carved your entryway, you're going to start hollowing out the rest of your mound. Now it's really a two-step process. You're gonna carve a vestibule and you're gonna carve a sleeping platform. The vestibule is about two to three feet deep, carved in, out in all directions, and it acts as a cold sink to let the cold air sink, um, and as for gear storage. So what you want to do after you finish that entryway, carve left, carve right, and carve up. This is where those sticks come into play. When you hit one of those sticks, you need to stop digging in that direction. And that tells you your wall thickness is about wrist to elbow length, which is generally cohesive enough, strong enough to maintain its structure as you hollow it out. So carve in all directions um, for that two to three feet further into the Quincy. Then you're going to jump up about two, two and a half feet really use the height of your doorway as the gauge. You wanna go above that, and that's gonna be the height of your bed, or your sleeping platform. Leave that, everything below that, and then carve, start, start carving farther back from there. The reason we do that is if you're sleeping on top of that platform, if there's any draft coming in that door, you don't want that going right on top of the platform. So if the platform's higher and the draft is below that, that cold air is gonna sink and settle down below. Continue carving same as before, just leave that platform intact. Carve all the way back and up and out uh, using those sticks as that gauge. A couple of tricks here. When you're first going in that entryway and in that vestibule, it's really tight in there. I like to take the blade off of my shovel and just go in and carve with just the blade uh, of the shovel. Uh, once you can sit up in there and maneuver a little bit more, you're past the hardest, by far the hardest part in this whole process and it becomes so much easier. I also like to carve away large chunks. If you can just slide your shovel around and carve out a large chunk and slide it out much the way you did with the doorway, it becomes so much quicker to carve this out. And that is somewhat dependent on snow quality as well. But it's, it is generally much, much faster than just shaving off little bits and shovelfuls with your shovel. Before closing off the doorway for the night, make sure to open an air hole. 
two to three inch diameter is fine. You may want to poke several of them. Try to take the predominant wind into account and don't face the air hole towards that wind direction. Once you're ready to call it a night, crawl inside, pull that block of snow in behind you, seal it up from the inside if you need to. Sleep tight. Hey. <laughs> Remember that a Quincy can take several hours to build, so in the event of a dire emergency, you're much better off building a quicker shelter. Build a trench shelter or something on your first night, spend the second day building a Quincy. Have fun, practice hard, and we'll see you next time.